position. So for me, I go slightly shoulder, uh, wider than shoulder width. Knees and, and toes pointing in the same direction. Try and sit back, keep the knees stable, and then drive up hard. All my training is um, based on being explosive and fast. I don't, you don't often see me lifting anything slowly. I do see a lot of guys in the gym that try and control all the movements. If you're a bodybuilder, that's perfect because you're trying to get the size and the, the pump into the arms. But for powerlifting, as a strongman, it's about lifting bigger weights. So I try and really focus on explosive power. I'm quite naturally explosive to start with, but I kind of find that way of training has helped me improve quicker to lift bigger weights. You'll see it particularly with my overhead later. I don't just stand there and kind of press. I really get as much leg drive in as I can, get the power through the body to press big weights up overhead. I would never stand here and say I've got the strongest shoulders in the country, but I do have the British record on the actual, the log and the dumbbell. So it's kind of ways of training for your sport that you're doing. And obviously for me, strongman is a sport. I've got to treat it that way as well, okay? It's not just about being statically strong. You have to try and work on every single area. So, let's put some more weight on. <laughs> uh, you can, yeah, do them. Okay, with deadlifting, I always try and start with my ass quite low and use my leg strength. Okay, you get some guys that they'll use more back and hamstrings. And my power comes from my legs mainly, so I've always try and set myself quite low. Feet shoulder width apart, hands just by the sides. In strongman, obviously, a lot of the time you can use straps, so I tend to use them most of the time in my training. Right now I'm training for a raw powerlifting competition, so I tend to then switch to a mixture. Um, okay, for me, when it's a lighter weight, I tend to keep my grip double overhand anyway. It's a good way of training the grip. Get in position, backside low, head up, and what I try and do is force my legs into the ground. Once the weight is over my knees, then I try and contract the glutes and pull through hard with the hamstrings, pull the, um, pull the shoulders back. So, quick demonstration. Now, all the time with my deadlifting, as my pressing as well, I try and move the weight quickly. When the weight gets heavier, obviously it slows down, but still I'm thinking about moving the weight fast. Okay, the same again. In position, pull the bar close to your shins, down, head up. You need to be smart with your training. Okay, I try and treat it like I would any other lift. Right from the start. Pull it in. Brandy. <laughs> okay.
Right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. tight, straight into the body, kind of dip as uh, push as hard as I can, get the timing right. As soon as the, the log or the bar is over my head, I then try and bring my head forward to engage the back muscles and be in a better position to press out at the top. Again with my log training I do a lot of speed work, or my overhead training in general, there's a lot of speed work and a lot of band, the resistance band work. Um, and I have in the past used bands on log, even from the bottom, to make the top bit of the clean a little bit harder. You know, like when you're cleaning the log, just that last bit can get a bit awkward. So um, just to give it a bit more resistance. Um, there's a video, I think, on YouTube of me doing 130 kilos on the log with bands. Uh, that's kind of the limit. I wouldn't ever go any heavier than that. I'd probably stick about 110 if I was using bands. Um, I'm going to do a few demonstration lifts, show you how I lift the log. Um, again, I'm explosive, so I try and use that leg strength and, and, and speed to my advantage. Another thing some people would struggle with on the log is cleaning it. I should imagine sometimes cleaning a big log is, mm -hmm. is awkward. You see people holding the bar in different places. The way I tend to do it is take the grip into the middle. First stage of the lift is basically a bent over row onto the knees. So you bend over row onto your knees then the weight will actually counterbalance you. So I actually sit back, um, I can't really do it without the weight. When the weight's on me, it kind of counterbalances me. And then I kind of drive and then quickly thrust my hips forward to try and roll the, bar, roll the, the log up my body. A little bit easier for people with bellies, but it's still fine if you don't. You can use your belt as well, you know, um, put the belt on. Darren Sadler, you know, he's slim as anything, but he uses his belt to try and hook the, the, the bottom of the log onto and roll it up the chest. Once you're rolling, when you get to the top, try and bring your elbows forward. And I tend to lean back slightly. Uh, it's, it's difficult for the smaller guys. Like the 90 kilo guys, it's very difficult having a big log and then being able to lean back. But the problem is if you stay upright, the, the, the weight comes too far forward and there's too much stress on the front belts. Um, and you know, no one's gonna front raise over 100 kilos. It's just the, the muscles are too small. So you need to try and get yourself in as central as position as possible, almost under the log. I drive with the legs, arms go into the pressing, head comes forward, and lock out. A little bit like this. So into that position, hips. And then. You can see I'm trying to bring my head forward as quick as possible. And even when the weight's up there, I've always got power to kind of drive off my um, chest. That power is generating through the body. And just then making sure you've got the power to lock out at the top. Uh, just to show I can press it. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer's walk, probably one of the most important things is, is grip strength and holding on to, to the implements. Um, you see a lot of people, they'll grab the farmers like this, lock in, the bar will be in the fingertip or into the fingers, and you often see those guys, their arms opening up pretty soon as soon as they get going. What I try and do is put the palm of my hand underneath the bar, lock my fingers round, lock my thumb into my fingers, and then twist round. So the bar basically bites into your skin. It's uncomfortable, but it's a stronger grip. Farmer's walk, grip strength. Get your grip sorted right from the start. Thumbs lock in, then you're off. And that's when it's all about speed. Um, like I said before, I don't train them all that heavy. The only time I'll train heavy is if I've got an extremely heavy farmer's walk in a competition, and I just need to kind of get used to that heavier weight. 
So one thing I was saying yesterday, and, uh, I mean yesterday the gym was kind of perfect, it was, it was a beautiful place to train, this is more like what I'm used to, and I like this kind of place to train, it's more hardcore. But for farmers and yoke, a good tip is to imagine there's a line along the floor, okay? You've got a big line going all the way down, you're going to focus on that line, as soon as you're up, imagine your feet are going as quick as they can, straight, you know, it's a fairly narrow stance, um, particularly on the yoke. If you go for a wider stance, the, the kind of yoke starts to wobble and, and you can lose um, control of it pretty quickly. You want to keep the implements as kind of smooth as possible. So I'm kind of in position, ready to go, up I go and then I'm off. Yoke's probably my favourite event actually. Um, I just right from the start enjoyed it. Um, I'm quite strong in the core, I've got big strong legs. Uh, the, the mistake I made right at the start, I used to um, put the bar too high up on my neck. I don't know if any of you have done it before, but you kind of have it on right at the top, you get like nasty mark, feels uncomfortable, feels like all the weight's kind of going straight down your spinal cord. Um, you're kind of like in that position and it's all kind of just crushing down. So to eradicate that kind of nasty pain, I tried to make create as much surface area on the bar as possible. And rather than having my hands low, I tend to put my hands a bit higher, get your traps into it and raise your shoulders up. So you can see now there's quite a lot of surface area on, on the actual yoke. Obviously I'm quite wide anyway, so it helps. But they come up and the yoke feels pretty stable. Um, once I pick it up, I then go into a narrow stance. I'll move the yoke and kind of show you. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so if you come close so you can see, you can see I get a lot of surface area on the bar. I'm trying to raise up my traps and raise my shoulders. It just gives you that kind of solid base to start from. If you have it just on the kind of clavicle, straight away it's kind of going to start rocking. And with like th even 300 kilos for me on there, it's going to be a lot harder than if I'm keeping it nice and steady. So, in position, up I get, kind of wide stance to lift, and then my first step, I go into a narrow position. Imagining that line on the floor, all the way down, you're just trying to focus on it. Step, 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 nice and quick. Uh, Terry and myself managed to take quite long strides, but I, I, unless you've got extremely strong legs, it's probably better doing smaller steps. Marius Pudzianowski was very, very good at small, quick steps. His foot speed was tremendous and he could fly with the yoke because of how quickly he moved. But if you watched his feet, they were very close together and it was just step, 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 nice and fast. I'll do a little run, I'm not going to go that fast, but I'll just show you. And again with this, you know, 260, I'd probably, if I was doing a yoke in a competition, 260 might be the first weight I'd use for training. Um, I'd do probably 20, 25 meters as fast as I could, have a rest, come back. Have another rest, go again, that would be my yoke training. Following week I might go to 300 kilos, then to like 330, maybe to 360, the last week 380. I don't ever tend to go to the weight I need to in a competition, just because obviously now I know I can lift those weights, so I've got that confidence. I'm just trying to build up the speed again and get my body used to training a certain event, get my muscles used to moving in a certain way again. On the yoke. Ready, go, you're up. Is it kind of well balanced? It's perfectly balanced. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stand about there just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think you should be lost up. Drop it onto like a mat or something just to. What bit is that, dear? Five, did you say? I don't know, five, yeah. I can only do three with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing with the dumbbells as well, this is actually quite a small one for um, 95. Yeah. Uh, they, they do very, because at World's Strongest Man now, they're trying to make everything look massive. So, you kind of, Rob Rob has got a similar one. A little bit longer, but probably about the same size, which is 118 kilos, yeah. which I managed to do. 
But you almost find the big ones slightly easier. Yes. You rest them and they're a bit higher. Uh, yeah. Uh, Press yeah, mm. basically, yeah. and they almost sit better across your shoulder. Yeah. Whereas these ones, you kind of yeah. just put. So when you're picking that up there, you're throwing it on to almost sitting it on your back. Yeah, you're trying to get it right across, almost across your neck, on your yeah. shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> basically, because yeah. obviously it's you're lifting with one hand, but your whole body's still going into the lift. The, the hardest thing is getting the balance. Um, sometimes you see kind of guys like fighting it, and myself included. If I can get it right, it actually can feel quite easy. But you get it slightly in the wrong position, and that's when it can almost become a nightmare. And that's why when you get fatigued, you start making mistakes and, and not getting as many reps as you'd like. So, up to the shoulder. So again, trying to use my leg strength. It's always nice when you tell people you like lifting like 100 kilos in one arm or something. <laughs> 